Hello and welcome to Motion Graphics and a Cheese, because all the other good names were taken. So today I'm going to show you how I made these uh, randomly animated letters that are primarily just being animated by just one layer and some expressions. So uh, let's get to it. So here would you have just the text. So first of all, I'm going to create a new null object, which is going to be our control layer. This layer is basically going to dictate the behavior of all the letters. So let's start by applying some uh, slider controls to this bad boy here. Slider controls are awesome. You can uh, attach all sorts of values to it and then modify it. And if you click on an effect and press enter, you can actually change the name, which is very nice when you want to have a proper overview over your effects. So I wrote times and I'm going to write amount, duplicate, and duplicate again and called delay. All right. These are the th three primary things we're going to need to start with. Now we go down to the uh, lightning text here. And if you double click, it becomes immediately editable. So I'm just going to call this L. Okay. First of all, I'm going to put another effect on this bad boy here. That's going to be point control. Where are you? Point control. So point control is uh, awesome. It basically mimics if you uh, press P on a layer, it will expose the position. It basically mimics the same as a position. It's a two coordinates uh, effect. So I'm just going to set it to zero, zero, and I'm going to call it wiggle. All right. So let's press E to expose the effects. And then let's go down to this wiggle here. So if we go up to the control layer, we're also going to expose these three bad boys here so we can link to them. So under here in the wiggle effect, you created on the L uh, letter, you just alt click on the stopwatch so that you can write an expression. Let's start by writing wiggle. Now wiggle is extremely practical. It basically uh, creates random values uh, throughout time. So to show you quickly what it actually does, if I press shift P to expose the position and remain uh, retain all the rest of the stuff I had open, I can now click on position, paste the wiggle. Now you can see here the letters wobbling around all over the place, like it just doesn't care. So this is extremely valuable, as you can imagine. You can make random values from this. You can make something rotate or shake or sway or whatever. So I'm just going to out click on position again to eliminate that wiggle. And just so you understand the wiggle expression, the first value dictates how often per second it's going to move or change value. And the second parameter dictates the maximum value that it's going to change every single time it changes. So that's why I wrote in the first control layer times and then I'm going to switch this 20 out with amount. See, that's the cool thing. If you notice what I did there, if you are already in an ex a writing an expression, you can pick whip up to a certain value and it would write that value for you. So that's why I linked two times and amount. So now they're uh, linked here on this layer. So now let's uh, go down to position and I'll click on this one. So this expression is going to be a little bit more complicated but it's also going to be pretty darn useful. So let's start by creating a variable, which is just an empty container of information. So you just call it whatever you want to call it, and then you attribute some sort of value to it. So name equals some value. So I'm going to pick whip up to this wiggle expression we made, so that it's directly looking at this layer's wiggle. Now we're going to create the next part, which is going to be delay which is going to be the delay of this particular layer. And we can link this to the control layer. If you recall, we have the delay here. Let's go on with the next one. We're going to call this old value. All right. And this old value, we're just going to link to this position so that it looks at this original value as is without any modifications. Now we're going to create a new variable called proximity. Proximity. All right. And this is going to be the, the if you link directly to the number uh, instead of the actual property, it's going to 
uh, it's going to link yeah to that specific number. So it's going to link to x in this uh, positions uh, property. We're going to write minus, and we're going to take it all the way up. And I see I forgot to expand the position here. So one second, this is wrong. Minus the x position of the control null layer. All right. So let's go down here and now. We're going to create a cool little expression that is going to calculate on the fly how close the null is to this letter. So proximity, proximity. So zero to a thousand, and then value, and then wig dot value at time, time minus delay. And then, whoops, it's taking the wrong letter. There we go. Then minus old value. Okay. So this doesn't make much sense yet, but it will. So ease out is, if you know about easings in keyframes, you know that a keyframe can ease in or ease out of values. So you know it slowly drifts in or drift out based on the animation. So the first, uh, so we're just applying this to this entire expression. So let's start at the first value here. The first value is the dynamic value because this is going to change depending on where the null is compared to this layer. I wrote something wrong here. It's got to be plus old value. All right. So now you can see it's actually wiggling, wiggling in place, right? So that's because the closer the null now gets to the letter, or if it's on the right side of the letter, it's not going to move. But if it's on the left side, it's going to wiggle around. So basically, when it surpasses zero, then it's going to uh, stop moving. But while it's a thousand pixels or more away, it's going to wiggle around all over the place. So that's why there's two values. So if it's close to zero, it will retain its value. If it's over a thousand uh, pixels away, it's going to wiggle around. So if we animate this like two seconds, we animate this null to go past the letter. So you can see the closer it gets, the less it wiggles. And this is already extremely valuable. So let's apply these other effects that we were talking about. So let's apply a tint. Let's just make it white for now, because we're going to change this in a second. Then we're going to apply a glow. Let's just change the colors, make it a little bit more interesting. Interesting. B colors, 10%, let's say 35. So right now it's just a nice glowing little letter here, right? So we're going to apply the same expressions to these two effects. So we're going to say amount of tint. We're going to out click on this and we're going to say wig equals. We're going to do the exact same thing as before. We're going to link to this wiggle here. And now we're going to say uh, if this is basically a question. I'll explain it in a second. If wig is more let's say less than five, then we're gonna do zero. Actually, it's the other way around. Let's do it the other way around. If it's more than five, it's gonna be a hundred. Else, it's gonna be zero. So right now, it's not doing much. That's because it has two values. So I'm just gonna make a square bracket here, which is going to tell it to take the first value of this wiggle point. So the X part of this value, then we click away. Now you can see it's changing between zero and a hundred. The cool thing is we just copy this expression and apply it to glow intensity. Now the values here have to be different, right? Because we intent, it goes all the way up to a hundred and all the way down to zero, but with Glow intensity, 
it's a little bit different. As you can see, the glow is looking very weird right there. So let's say two. That's the glow twice. So see already now, it's glowing sometimes and sometimes not. So we have this. So now we're gonna apply, well, I mean, we can apply a second glow here to give it a little bit more oomph, you know, and uh, who doesn't like a little bit of oomph, you know? And we can see, bam, it's really glowing up. If you find it irritating to watch the GUI on top of your screen or the user interface graphics, you can either click here, but this would only hide the masks. So what I do is I press Control Shift H and that will hide all the GUI elements on the screen so you can properly see what is happening. That's really nice because they can be quite distracting. So now we have the two glows. So now we're going to apply a displacement. A displacement, uh, yes, displacement map. So this is also an awesome effect. It will displace an image based on another image. So now that we have, uh, let's just apply the expression first. So first of all, let's take, let's change it to luminance because we're just going to use black and white. We don't really care about color. Then we go down here to the max uh, horizontal displacement and we're just going to press uh, paste the copy uh, the expression in from before. 100 may be overkill, but let's take it down to 40 just in case. I'm going to select the entire thing, copy and paste. All right. So right now it's just taking itself and displacing. It's not very interesting. So I'm going to create a new layer up here, new solid. Let's call it disp, uh, just disp map for short, because I'm lazy. Let's apply a cell pattern. So this is also awesome. This also has all manner of settings that you can play around with. It can be like organic worms or what have you, but it could also be crystals and plates and all kinds of things. So if we hide this, go down to our L layer here, and let's just minimize to make it a little bit more clear. Now we have the displacement map. So we're going to change which layer it looks at, which is going to be the newly created displacement map. And we're going to say that it's effects and masks it should also look at. So now you can see it's taking those crystals and really animating the living crap out of this L here. So if you feel like it's you know, uh, glitching a little bit too much, although this looks quite electric, so I, I don't really have anything against it. But if you think it's too much, you can just change the value within the expressions here. Just to make it a little bit more clear, you know, as you can see. If you also want the displacement to change over time, you can always just out click on evolution here and write time times, oops, times, I don't know, 350. It's probably not nearly enough action. Let's say 1,500 because we want it to look very glitchy. So see, now it's really looking electric-ish. The cool thing is now, if we minimize these layers, now we have the L here. So now we're just missing what I forgot to do before. So this is going to be times index and then minus uh, two. So it starts at one. So when you write index, it's going to look at this layer's index. So this is extremely practical if you want to delay things over time. So now that we added the index uh, or the delay, I'm just going to duplicate these letters and uh, show you how we can delay them sequentially. So now we have all this text written down and you see the, it depends on where the null is. It's gonna, ah, there we go. Depending on where the null is, it's gonna make them vibrate out of place, right? So when it's on the left, they're all going to be vibrating and the further it goes to the right, they're going to vibrate less and less. You can maybe even animate the, the amounts to be to happen almost at the same time. So right now it's very hectic. So we could take it all the way down to 12 or something. The cool thing is you can almost see like this cascading effect. So if we take it all the way down to let's say four, you would be able to see, and let's just move the keyframes so you can uh, properly see, but now it's actually, they're following each other's movements, but delayed in time. If we decrease it even more, it's gonna become even more visible. 
especially if we also add a little bit of delay here, something like this. See, it's almost a wave of animation. So you can do a lot of things with this setup. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, found this useful. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what other people do with uh, these type of setups. I really enjoy watching other people's uh, setups and seeing how they do things and learning new ways uh, on how to set up my projects. And uh, I mean, you, you can always improve, right? You can always learn more. And there's always something that somebody else has thought about that I didn't think about. And you can just keep on building on that. So um, I hope you guys can use this for something. And uh, hopefully I'll see you for the next tutorial.